everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to install and make use of the Ripple emulator. Ripple is a way to emulate a PhoneGap or Cordova project within your web browser itself. Now, this is extremely powerful because the uh, desktop browser is a heck of a lot quicker to use. It has really good debugging tools, and most of most of us are used to testing web apps within a browser. So Ripple makes this a heck of a lot easier and a lot of fun as well. So let's walk through how we will install this. Now, quick note, I am assuming that you already have PhoneGap or Cordova installed. I'm also assuming that you already have uh, at least one of the mobile platforms installed, preferably Android. Uh, if you have not done that, then please stop. Make sure you've you know, gone through those installation instructions. Make sure you can create something with Cordova before you go any further. Okay, with that being said, and again, I'm assuming you have that stuff installed, I'm going to install the Ripple emulator. And much like Cordova, it's installed via NPM. So I will do my sudo uh, npm install minus g ripple emulator. Uh, obviously, you would do the same thing in Windows, but you wouldn't have the sudo in front. Hit enter, and this should run pretty quickly. And it is going to be done. Ah, perfect. Okay, so now Ripple is installed. So let's create a real quick and simple Cordova project. So we'll just call it, I don't know, uh, App1. So I will go into App1. And let's add Android as a platform. And perfect. Okay, so at this point, I would start editing my www folder, you know, edit my project, and I would build it and emulate it on my Android device. But instead, I want to use Ripple. So because I've already installed it, I can just run it by typing Ripple Emulate. It's going to open a new tab in Chrome, and there is my Cordova project running in my desktop browser. I want to show you something back in Terminal real quick here. Uh, if you have worked with Cordova before, and obviously you have if you're watching this video, you know that uh, there's a step where you have to copy the files from www into your different platform uh, folders. Uh, the command line will do that for you. I want to point out that Ripple will also do that for you as well. It detected that I had Android installed and went ahead and it updated uh, the Android folder for me, which is pretty nice. And this is actually a good time to talk about, you know, how do we do updates? I want to go into my editor here and I will open up the www folder and let me just modify a little bit of the HTML to say test one. Now, if I were doing this, you know, without Ripple, I would know that I, I would have to either do a build or a prepare or an emulate, which will run all that for me. Uh, and that handles copying the full, the assets from www into my platforms area. But for Ripple, it's a little bit different. Let's say I just want to hit reload and I'll do that with a command R or a control R. And I just did that. You can see my fingers typing, but I did. And notice that it has not picked up the change. This is a kind of a you know small little bug with Ripple. It may be fixed by the time you see this. If you want to reload the page, you have to click on the reload icon. As soon as I click that, it does a proper update. Now, how is that different from me hitting the keyboard combo? I have no idea. All I know is that if you want to see this work, you want to hit the actual reload button, uh, not to use the keyboard combo. Sweet. So we have a Ripple project here working. Uh, let's talk about the UI. Now, a lot of this will be just kind of common sense, uh, so I won't go into uh, you know very deep detail, but let me just kind of walk you through what the features are. First thing, um, all the UI items can be minimized. You'll notice these little arrows here and there. If I want to maximize my real estate for my screen, I can just hide them like so. Next, all the pods on these sides can be minimized by clicking on the titles, just like so. And Ripple actually does a good job of remembering what you've done before. Uh, I've already minimized a lot of these, so it's showing up for me minimized automatically. Uh, so keep in mind that you could set this up the way you like, and Ripple is going to try its best to remember what you did last time. So let's go through uh, the pods here just one by one. 
On the device side, obviously this kind of uh, allows you to switch between different devices. Uh, there is a small bug in this area that I'll show at the end uh, if you switch from Android to iOS. But for right now, just kind of know that if I switch to a different device, the Cordova device API will definitely reflect that. Again, Ripple is emulating a device and if I want to see you know, the name of the device, Nexus 4 versus HTC Legend, uh, the device API will actually pick up on what you select here. Uh, you can also switch orientation if you want. Going down into platforms, uh, Ripple actually supports more than testing just PhoneGap and Cordova. But honestly, I have never worked with these, so I don't ever, you know, end up changing this. The information pod just kind of tells you about the platform, the device. This is also something that I don't use very often, but I could see the screen resolution being pretty useful information if you want to know, you know, how much you could fit on your app at one time. The last thing on this side is the accelerometer. So if you're building anything with your application that involves you know, shake to reload or anything like that, you actually have a little UI here where you can click and grab and mess with the device. There's also a little shake button down there as well. And again, this works perfectly fine with the Cordova APIs. Uh, going over here to the right side, under settings, I pretty much don't mess with this in general. I want to point out one thing that you should pay attention to. Now, hopefully you know that uh, by default in a browser environment, if you do an AJAX request to another server, you will be blocked. That is a security feature of all browsers. Now, there are definitely workarounds for that. JSONP is an example. Uh, modern browsers support something called cores. But what Ripple does, it says, you know what, I don't care. I'll just make this work for you. And it does this via a proxy. Now, out of the box, Ripple is going to default to a remote proxy that's hosted on a server ran by RIM, uh, the guys who do BlackBerry. That service may or may not be up. So what I recommend is that you simply switch to the local, and as you can see, I have it there, and that will use the proxy server that the command line actually set up for you. I have uh, filed a bug report with the Ripple project to make this the default so you don't have to worry about it. But if you ever see issues where you can't make an Ajax call and you know it should be working, try setting this. Just going down again, uh, you can also do testing with the connection type. Uh, you may be building an application, for example, that allows you to record video, but you can only upload it on Wi-Fi and you can't do it on a cell network. You could test that within Ripple. You can also test some basic globalization things as well. You can see you have a drop down between English, French, and German. For geolocation, you could do fun things like, you know, changing where you are. So you may live in Louisiana, but what you want to test your application as if it was running in California. You have a map to do that down here, and you can also actually enter manual values as well. Uh, the config pod, I won't talk a lot about. It works with the config.xml file. It tries to do some basic parsing of it. Uh, this is not something that I use typically in my day-to-day -day work. And finally, events. This allows you to fake a fire, uh, sorry, fake a particular event. So for example, I could fire an event for going offline. A good Cordova application should support that. It should recognize when it's offline and handle it gracefully. Well, I can test that within Ripple itself. So all in all, you can see it's pretty, sens uh, pretty sensible. Um, again, the big benefit here is being able to work directly on my desktop browser and use my built-in tools for that. I want to point out one bug, though, that you may run into. I'm going to go back into Terminal, and I am going to make a new application called App2. I'll go into App2, and let's just add iOS. Okay, so now that's done, I'm going to run ripple emulate, and we get an error. What happened here is that by default, ripple is using an Android device, and ripple tried to run the Android platform. Well, that platform did not exist, so you get this error. So how would I fix it? Well, if I really am just using iOS, all I would do is click on here and switch to the iPhone or you know, the iPad, etc. And this will work just fine. 
If I'm using both platforms, I just forgot to add Android, I just go back and add. The nice thing is that, again, Ripple is going to remember that you prefer the iPhone. So the next time I run this, it's going to default to that as well. <laughs> just don't forget, if you do this with a new project that's Android only, you'll get the same error. So something to watch out for. Anyway, I hope this was helpful and good luck with your Cordova Ripple debugging.